Hello, welcome. I'm going to scroll through this problem so you can pause it and read it and then press play when you want to solve it with me. Okay, so in this problem I'll read, Elena has decided to run the Buffalo Half Marathon in May. She researched training plans on the internet and is looking at two possible plans. Jillian's 12-week plan, which one's that? Okay, this is Jillian's right here. And then Josh's plan, which is a little bit more over all over the place. Uh, Jillian's 12-week plan and Josh's 14-week plan. The number of miles run per week for each plan is plotted below. Okay, so you've got weeks, you've got miles. All right. Which one of the plans follows an arithmetic pattern? Explain how you arrived at your answer. So I don't, I mean, arithmetic is essentially has a constant amount that you're adding, which means you would get essentially a linear pattern where the dots are not connected. Remember that sequences don't have the in-between, they just, they just have the dots. But the idea of arithmetic is that it's linear. Geometric is exponential. So, so if we're linear, you would expect, that's arithmetic, you would expect a line, right, with a constant slope. And with geometric, that's uh, not, sorry, exponential. So arithmetic, arithmetic sequences are linear and exponential sequences are geometric. So geometric sequences are exponential. This is badly drawn by me. Curve, something like that. You would see some kind of exponential growth. I'm gonna erase that because it doesn't look very nice. Um, here though, we can say two things really quick. We can say it's arithmetic, right? And what do we have to say? We don't have to say too much. We can say because the slope, I'll say, is constant. And I'll say what it is because I can read it. If I couldn't read the slope, I would just say it has a constant slope and the points fall in the line. But I could read the slope. Here, my rise is one about and then over one. So it's about one mile every one week and is about one mile for each one week. It's a one for one slope about. And that's constant throughout. Every time we go up one mile, that's for each week. Up one mile for each week. It's constant throughout, hence the fact that it forms a line here. Write a recursive definition to represent the number of miles run each week for the duration of the plan that you choose. Okay, so um, recursive starts off, we define the first term, a sub one, I'll call it, is 10. I can just do that here. A sub 1 is 10. And then every term after that, uh, we set the slope as about 1, right? So it's the previous term, A sub n minus 1, the term before the one you're looking at, plus 1. It's always one more mile than the week before. And a recursive definition is just built in this way. We start off by, by defining the first couple of steps, or in this case, just the first step. And then every step after that is, def is defined by some combination of previous steps before it. In this case, just the one step before it. All right, so then finally we go to Jillian's plan has an alternative. Okay, if Elena wanted to train for a full 26 mile marathon, week one would start at 13 miles and follow the same pattern for the half marathon, but it would continue for 14 weeks. Well, okay, write an explicit formula. So recursive formulas build each step. Explicit formulas, I can jump around, in this case, at any any point in the 14 weeks, I can just plug in a number and find out how many miles she's riding. With the recursive definition, you have to go step by step by step. Uh, and they want us to write in simplest form, okay, to represent the number of miles she runs each week. So uh, she starts at 13 miles, right? I'm just going to write this out. And then each mile she adds one week. So this is our sequence, right? This is what we're dealing with. And we want to know for any step, right, um, what is the value, right? This is usually referred to as for the nth step, we usually refer to that value as a sub n, but they didn't specify the variable here, so you could probably call it anything you want, but I would stick with the standard here. So what is the value of the miles she will run given any week? And we know it's up to 26 weeks, but we don't have to really worry about that. We don't have to specify that n has to be less than or equal to uh, 26, but we can add that to our equation if we'd like. This is an arithmetic sequence, right? That's what an explicit formula would be. It's not recursive. We start at 13, and then after we reach 13, we add one every week that increases. So it's n minus one times one. Essentially, that's our, our common difference, right? 
you might remember the formula in general for any uh, arithmetic sequence a sub n equals our starting point a sub 1 that's the first term and then we add n minus 1 times the common difference which is essentially our slope and if we simplify this, I distribute the 1, I get 13 plus n minus 1, and a sub n equals 12 plus n. And then, you know, test your formula, see if it works. a sub 3, we should get 15, right? 12 plus 3, 12 plus n is 3, is 15, and it's working. Um, I, don't, I don't have it in front of me. Um, I would say that it can't hurt, but I, mean, I think you'll get full credit if you wrote this. But you say where n is any integer um, between, um, and n is, I'll say, I'll say it this way, where n is, n is a number of weeks, so it's a whole number, n is a whole number in the interval, I don't think you need to say any of this, but it could help, uh, between, what is it, 0 and I think it was 14 weeks. So you're, you're just stating the values of n that work here. All right, thank you.